I'm Julie Zenner along with Dennis Anderson and here's what's coming up on Almanac North. The new director of the Duluth Depot will work with the facility's tenants to improve collaboration, increase attendance, and enhance and preserve the historic landmark. Lincoln Park's resurgence continues with a midsummer celebration this weekend for neighborhood residents and businesses. And we'll take you to Hibbing's new Mine View location featuring 360 degree views of the area. These stories in the business news next on Almanac North. Hello and welcome to Almanac North. Thanks for watching. And Denny, this midsummer heat has almost made me forget about last winter. Well, I think I'm going to pocket some of this heat and reopen it come uh, January and February. All right. Well, good luck with See that. See what happens. Good luck with that. <laughs> <All right. Yeah. laughs> We've got some great guests this week. Let's get started. All right, Julie, thank you very much and welcome everyone. Well, the St. Louis County Heritage and Arts Center, commonly called the Depot, has a new director tasked with improving management and operations at the facility. The hiring came after 18 months of study by a subcommittee appointed by the St. Louis County Board. The board created the new depot director position to improve operations and management at the facility. Joining us now is Mary Tennis, director of the St. Louis County Heritage and Arts Center, and Brian Fritzinger is the deputy St. Louis County Administrator and a member of the Depot Subcommittee. Thanks to both of you for being here. Well, Mary, you've got a, what, a background in arts and in the business. What made you a good fit? Why did you even apply for this job? Something about the job just spoke to me right off the bat. Um, my experience is working with a, a small business that became kind of large. We went from five employees to 50 in uh, the 18 years that I was employed there. Northern Water Smokehouse, mm -hmm. Canal Park. Um, and what I really enjoyed about the job was facilitating a lot of different folks towards a common goal. <laughs> so um, I know that that is part of my task here as the director. Um, and I've also uh, been involved with the Duluth Public Arts Commission uh, for the past several years. I'm currently the president. Um, and so it, being able to facilitate, to move, to grow any of our wonderful local arts programming is just, it's a dream come true for me, really. Mm -hmm. Brian, now this was a newly created position. What made the county um, decide that there was really a need for a director at the depot? Well, the county has over quite a few years um, had a number of different studies that were completed mm -hmm. for the depot and, and consistently they talked about different ways to try to address some of the overarching management and marketing aspects of it. The committee uh, again kind of dug in real deep, met with all the tenants, spent a lot of time really uh, taking a look at those old studies and analyzing different options. We have over the last uh, six, eight years worked with a private contractor to act as our manager um, with uh, some good results, but we really felt that there was some greater opportunity to move this in a direction. And so the idea really was to kind of uh, get a first time staff person and move us down and take us to that next level of, of helping our tenants and, and seeing some real success down here. Brian, do you have some plans already for marketing the depot? And I would imagine that marketing is, is a pretty big part of what needs to be done. The marketing is a huge aspect of it. Uh, one of the things that came from a few years before even I started, there was some um, visioning that took place with the tenants. And one of the things they talked about back then was really the need to really step up on some of the broader collaborative efforts on the marketing sure. that currently weren't taking place at that time. Um, right now there is no specific plan on the marketing side. That's really what uh, we've brought uh, Mary on board with to help us and help the tenants kind of get that vision. But clearly it was a need to try to see how we could utilize this facility without all of Rams or St. Louis County and all the, the city here and, and really take some things on that can move us in a different direction. Mm -hmm. Mary, talk about some of the, the tenants who are in the building and you know, it seems like they come from some pretty different 
perspectives. Um, thoughts on how you start uh, herding the cats? Uh, well, <laughs> they're not cats. <laughs> <laughs> they're um, extremely talented, uh, organized, driven, um, and powerful organizations. Good. Um, and they they are, you know, there's they're very diversified. There's some that have historical um, interests. There are some that have, you know, more contemporary interests. Um, you know, we've got the Duluth Art Institute. We have the Playhouse. We have the Underground Theater. Yeah. We have the St. Louis County Historical Society. We have, uh, of course, the uh, Lake Superior, uh, you know, Scenic Railroad and mm -hmm. Train Museum. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, these are all enormous assets. Um, bringing them together, I mean, they all want the same thing, which is a well-run, beautiful, welcoming facility for all the visitors of St. Louis County and beyond. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm doing right now is um, I'm, I'm just talking to all of them and getting their input because they really have a wealth of information and they have some really good ideas um, and kind of putting those together to form that plan to go forward. Maybe the two of you can chime in on this one. Um, what would it mean for the depot uh, if there is indeed passenger service between the Twin Ports and the Twin Cities again? Well, I think the, the idea of the NLX um, to get that service back to this area again, the, the broader we can get uh, attendance and folks that come through the community and through the region, uh, and this being the, the funnel point for that, I think is just a huge uh, benefit to the region. Um, the depot itself, uh, we have a number, uh, as Mary has indicated, of the, of the tenants and the activities they're doing. And the more we can supplement that with some additional bodies that are coming through and, and taking advantage of it and exposing them uh, to the broader area, we, we just think is a great benefit if we can get the NLX to come through. Mm -hmm. Will some of your promotion be to the broader area even now before there's any possibility of train service? We don't know yet. You okay. know, we're, we're just building that. I've been on the job for five days. This is, <laughs> <laughs> this is day five. Um, and so, you know, we need to circle the wagons and talk about that. Um, we already do some advertising, of course, um, down, you know, towards the cities. And um, we do some on the Iron Range. But um, we don't have the, the, the facts of the marketing, you know, plan in mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. As you look at at the the depot kind of from a, a fresh perspective do you see a lot of areas where you think it it's being underutilized right now where there where there's room for growth or, or room for some exciting new programs absolutely um, the great hall although you know there have been several exhibits and um, you know there are annual um, you know festivals and events that are successful there it still isn't always in use and so that is an area of, uh, of great interest mm -hmm. to, the, um, to the county. I think the Great Hall, um, when you look at space needs within the community and the region in terms of large meeting spaces, it's an asset that there's not a lot of like that. And I think the previous years, they've done some good jobs utilizing it with different aspects for the weddings and other things that bring people in. But looking for some broader uh, consistency and how do we use that as the yeah. large facility that is and make people aware that it's available. Mm -hmm. The depot is obviously a gem in downtown Duluth. Um, is there any space within the depot itself to, to broaden the clientele? Uh, how many different services and programs are available in the depot now? It seems like you're full. The facility itself, when you actually look at the space, is fully occupied. Uh, every nook and cranny uh, either has storage from the existing tenants or tenants that are utilizing it. So it's not a facility really designed for us to uh, take and, and rent out more space. Uh, I think over time, again, we, we have a good tenant mix right now, but we always want to be making sure we're looking at that mix and making sure that uh, everybody is, is working on the same page toward this broader uh, gem, as you mm -hmm. indicate, that, and make it what we can make it into. Mm -hmm. I understand that the county's top bonding request for 2020 is expected to be some funding to uh, do some preservation and maintenance at the depot. What are the, the projects that really need to be done that you see? Well, when you look at the depot, uh, it's obviously a building that is uh, of an age that is always in need of maintenance and repair mm -hmm. and, and really just keeping track of the things that uh, are, are slowly kind of aging. 
uh, one of the major pieces right now from a maintenance side is just the HVAC system, the, the air circulation in the facility, the heating, air conditioning, those sorts of things are the big ones. Uh, we also have uh, continual kind of challenges with water uh, in the building, both from a roof standpoint as well as leakage through walls and floors. And so we know there's a lot of things like that that we have to address through that standpoint. The bonding request that we've made this time also does include uh, a secondary project, which is uh, working with the Lake Superior Railroad Museum mm. on a new concept, uh, a model train display that they have. And so there's a portion of those dollars uh, that would allow for some expansion in the building uh, to accommodate that as well. Well, it sounds like you've got some big plans ahead. You're just beginning, so all the best to you. And thank Thanks. you, Mary and Brian, both for being here tonight. Yeah. Thanks thank you for much. having us. Appreciate thank it. you. Yeah. Good. Duluth Lincoln Park is in the midst of a remarkable rebirth. New businesses, crafters, and restaurants seem to pop up monthly. And this weekend, residents and businesses have a chance to celebrate their success with a neighborhood party. The event is a collaboration and reimagining of a couple of previous events. And here to tell us more is Jody Broadwell, Executive Director of the Lincoln Park Children and Families Collaborative. And Shannon Lang is with Equilibrium 3 and is Lincoln Park Neighborhood Coordinator. And thanks to both of you for being here. Thanks for having I us. Appreciate it. Now, Jody, this weekend celebration, it's a combination of an event that your organization used to host along with um, one that the Duluth Folk School had planned. Talk about how that all came together. So Meet on the Street was originally an uh, event that St. Louis County had started with some ship funding and Josh Gorham um, used to lead that effort and it was with uh, Lincoln Park on the Move Coalition which I was a member of and that was back in 2014 we had the first event then and that event was always meant to be taken over by a community organization the county kind of started it and then uh, when I came on to the collaborative in 2015 Josh was one of my first board recruits and he was like hey Jode this fits in with our mission. We should, t you know, you all should take over this event or we should take this over. And so we, uh, we were the lead organizers in 2016, 17, and 18. So mm -hmm. this is actually the sixth year of the event and it's been growing every year. And um, Shannon, you can probably talk a little bit more about the summer solstice, but once I heard that um, Shannon and Brian at the Duluth Folk School were planning to do a summer solstice the same weekend as meet on the street, I was like, hey, we just gotta work <laughs> together on this. We'll have one big, you know, really amazing event, so. So what is the summer solstice, uh, Shannon? Well, last year, Brian, um, Brian French from the Duluth Folk School approached m uh, me and said, you know, let's have a street event. There are so many things happening down here. And so we uh, decided we were gonna have a solstice event on the longest day of the year. And it was a success and we were going to expand it this year. Uh, but uh, grandmas changed the date of their, <laughs> of their race and uh, to the solstice and we thought well we need to think of a different date and came up with July 13th and that's when Jody uh -huh. contacted us and we thought it was an absolutely perfect opportunity to um, kind of meld the, the exciting things yeah. that are happening in the business area with um, the neighborhood residents. Talk to us a little bit about the rebirth of Lincoln Park. I know you're, you're trying to make improvements for families, for children. What's happening in the Lincoln Park neighborhood? Oh, uh, wow, a lot. <laughs> uh, it seems like every time you turn around, there's another entrepreneur who is really, really making something happen. And uh, really, they get all the credit because they work really hard to make those businesses go. Um, and uh, I think the kind of the secret to the success of what's happened has been this kind of collaboration between the businesses. So. 
uh, having the opportunity to collaborate on this event really just fits right in with exactly what has been making everything such a success. Mm -hmm. What has the, the Lincoln Park Children and Families Collaborative been doing? What, what's your focus these days as you look at some of the successes that are taking place in the business community, but then looking at the residents who also live in that neighborhood? Yeah, so one of our um, main things that we do is support children and families, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's connecting them to resources or maybe opportunities, and uh, one of our biggest projects that we started this year was we opened a family daycare. So where um, sometimes we try to address different needs in the community too, and one of those needs is childcare sh shortage. There's an ep epidemic in Minnesota right now of right. childcare, so we started a program um, this year, and and that's going along really well. So mm -hmm. um, we also offer parenting classes, and um, you know we work with parents to try to support them as much as possible in uh, supporting their kids and um, building strong, thriving communities. Is mm -hmm. there a center through which you work? Uh, well, we do the family daycare right in our space, and we're located in the former Lincoln Park Elementary School, and so we have a space there, and we got it licensed, and we've been open since January. Mm -hmm. yeah. now, now, historically, the Lincoln Park neighborhood has been uh, a lower-income neighborhood in Duluth. Has the investment in the business district, has that kind of started reaching out to, to help those families with some of the issues that they were facing? Well, that's, that's one of the things that we're trying to do at this event is uh -huh. exactly that, is to start to, you know, things have happened so ha so very quickly in the, in the business district. People have hardly had a chance to even take a breath. And so now we're, we're taking a moment to take that breath and, and start to make those connections between what's happening with the business district and what we would like to see for the neighborhood mm -hmm. residents to succeed and, and do well. It mm -hmm. sounds like you're trying to say to uh, other Duluthians, hey, we're, we're, we're a growing part of town. Uh, perhaps we're uh, a different than what we've been in the last 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, come see us. Is that, can you talk about that? What kind of a drive do you have to try to get other Duluthians and those who don't even live in the city to visit Lincoln Park? Yeah, the perception of the neighborhood has always has been a challenge since, um, since I stepped into this role. Uh, the, the perception has been really the big, the big deal. And when I've had conversations with residents as well as um, business owners, the, the number one th challenge they say is the perception of the neighborhood. They always are really key to say perception because they know that the neighbors are good to each other sure. and, and we help each other out. So how do we, how do we you know, let other people know about this? And it's, it, it is the words getting out and people are finding out and they're coming down to find out for themselves. Mm -hmm. Are residents, um feeling like they have a voice in what's happening in their neighborhood? Or uh, have they been engaged throughout the process as this whole vision for a, a new revitalized Lincoln Park has come together? That's a tough <laughs> question. <laughs> it, it, I, no, it is because because the, I don't think, you know, the biz, the individual businesses that are opening, their, their concern is their own business. And, right. and now as we're looking at things from the neighborhood approach, that's, that's the challenge and that's what we're trying to, that's exactly what we're trying to make happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as you mentioned, a lot of folks in Lincoln Park live in poverty and mm -hmm. when you live in poverty, often you um, become or can feel isolated and as well, you're just struggling to do those day-to-day -day things, put sure. food on the table, mm -hmm. pay your bills. And so, um, you know, mingling in the business community might not be number one, on your to-do list and so this event is really a great way to kind of make a bridge between some of the residents and the craft district. Um, we're adding all kinds of arts and crafts and mm -hmm. music and different stuff to this event and so we're hoping to kind of help, you know, start building that bridge. Are the people who live in Lincoln Park responding to those possibilities that they have through your organization? Yeah, so one of the things that we do is we, we have a parent group and so we work a lot with parents and different community members to help support them in changes that they want to make. And so um, we're always getting input and working together with parents and community members to, to create a thriving, healthy Lincoln Park. And, and we can do that in a lot of ways, but yeah, we're always working with families and, and supporting their efforts and what they want to do. And, and that's really one of the reasons that our parents continue and keep getting involved with Meet on the Street because they help do a lot of the planning mm -hmm. as well. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. Speaking of getting involved, uh, the Twin Ports Interchange Project is heading down the road for your neighborhood. Uh, um, <laughs> what's the potential impact of that on Lincoln Park right now? Pretty huge. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, with most um, types of pro projects of this type, you know, you'll have, you know, the, they'll do a mile and then they'll move a mile down the road and down, and this is going to be concentrated in our neighborhood for three years. Uh, so that is actually a conversation that we're going to be having next week at a crafting community meeting um, uh, next Thursday morning uh, to talk about what those potential economic impacts are going to be on the, on the businesses that are really just starting to roll. Mm -hmm. Yeah, We have just a, a couple of seconds, but for, for people who want to attend the, the event this weekend, give us the, the nuts and bolts. So it's Sunday, July mm -hmm. 14th from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. It's located on West Superior Street between uh, 19th Avenue West and 21st Avenue West. Wonderful. All right. Yeah. Well, Jody and Shannon, thank you so much for coming in. Congratulations on the exciting things that are happening out there and your role in them. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks thank for you. having us. us. Appreciate it. Thank you. Two years ago, the city of Hibbing was forced to close its famed mine view of the Hull Rust Mine. The mine view had been visited by generations of Iron Range residents and tourists, and its loss was tangible for the entire community. Now, with help from a number of partners and a design firm with ties to Hibbing, a new mine view is open and gaining attention. Our camera crew visited earlier this week. I think this was one of the potential sites at the time, and then when they secured it, we came up here and it was just absolutely incredible. The views it afforded around not only the mine, but up the Mesabi Iron Range and then back to the city of Hibbing as well. We started uh, pointing out what is the most significant elements that creates Iron Range and Hibbing. Mesabi Axis is, was the biggest first thing that came to us and that's how we started organizing the park layout. So there's these echoes of all the history uh, not just the viewports, but the viewports really were the driving kind of idea behind the whole thing. And so that's why you'll see what's behind us here is we wanted to amplify kind of this idea of punching through the earth and then being in the earth, but then also getting these expansive views. There are a few new artifacts. Uh, this giant 38 ton shovel bucket was donated. Uh, so that's a new, a new piece here. The diesel engine is, was at the old site and the uh, old uh, truck was at the old site. Everyone involved has been great. Cliffs Natural Resources have been wonderful. They've been huge supporters and donors to the project. Uh, Pete Hajduk in the city of Hibbing has been just a godsend. The IRRRB has put a ton of money into this as well. They uh, funded a large portion of, the, of this phase one park. They've also funded uh, a large portion of the building foundations which are going to be going in soon. I would love people to recognize this place as a significant piece of not only land but depth of history and depth of cultures and uh, impact to the outside of the outside of Hibbing. It is a kind of a hidden treasure city but it's very worth traveling here to see what created those uh, communities around Mesabi Range and how it grows to uh, impact to the world. Organizers are hoping to get state bonding money for phase two of the Hibbing Mine View project, which would include a tourist center with a separate maps and geology room. It's time now for a look at the week's top economic stories from Business North. In a Facebook post this week, Duluth Mayor Emily Larson reiterated her concern that Husky Energy plans to continue using hydrogen fluoride at its superior refinery. Larson wrote that residents have not been made aware of the extent to which the chemical is dangerous, nor been given any proof that safer alternatives are not financially viable. Well, on Monday, the Duluth City Council will consider a resolution authored by Larson 
that asks the EPA to review the usage of hydrogen fluoride in refineries throughout the country to avoid potential catastrophes. National Bank of Commerce is further expanding its area presence with the acquisition of Republic Bank in downtown Duluth. If approved by regulators, NBC will have approximately $1 billion in assets. NBC already is the largest locally owned bank in the Twin Ports. President and CEO Steve Burgess said the growth will allow it to offer larger commercial loans and provide more services. Republic, which also has a focus on commercial lending, was founded by Gino Pellucci. NBC previously acquired 49% of Republic by purchasing the shares of Mickey Pellucci, Gino's son. The remainder was bought from the Pellucci estate. Classes will start this fall for a new online master's degree program at the College of St. Scholastica. It will prepare graduates for careers in the field of applied data analytics, the science of converting raw data into information that assists in decision making. The new program is designed to make data analytics usable by people regardless of their business background. The entire two-year program can be completed 100% online. For more on these and other stories, visit businessnorth.com. You can catch up on our past shows and keep up to date on current topics by following Almanac North on our social media channels. You will find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And get updates about your favorite PBS programs by visiting the WDSE website where you can find news about the station and our upcoming events. And Denny, I, I think there's more heat on tap for the weekend, at least if you're away from Lake Superior. I love summertime. Uh, we all do. Bring it on. Bring <laughs> all right. It on. For Danny and the crew here at Almanac North, I'm Julie Zenner. Have a great weekend, everyone. We'll see you next time.